welcome everybody. Uh, this is um, one of a, a series of lectures uh, or uh, workshops that I've been doing uh, for the uh, BSBI Aquatic Plant Project, uh, working on the identification of. Our Sorry, aquatic... Nick, your Nick, your picture is just a little bit out. That's okay. great. There we go. Um, uh, it, uh, yeah, it's one one of a series of of, of uh, webinars that I've been doing uh, for the Aquatics Plant Project. Um, the, the the main aim is just to to uh, some people have have difficulty with aquatic plants. There are different, often different groups, and they're not terribly showy things. Um, and hopefully, the, uh, this series is uh, going to help to to make things easier. Uh, the, the, this is this this uh, webinar will sort of interconnect between uh, one I did uh, quite early on, which was an introduce introduction to aquatic plants, uh, which sort of set out uh, the the the, the uh, uh, groups that I use, uh, I, which I think are the best way of approaching aquatic plants. There are probably about a hundred species of, of aquatic plants in in Britain and Ireland, and uh, it just helps to cut down the possibilities if you can put them in into one or other of these groups. Uh, and some of the families that that we've uh, 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 that we will be sort of touching on, I have already covered um uh, in in detail in in other webinars so i won't go too far into some some of the families where they're already covered um so today we are going to uh, have a look at uh stringy aquatic plants now for stringy my definition of stringy you probably think that quite a lot of aquatic plants just look stringy um but the de definition that i'm using here is, is uh, a species that have uh undivided linear leaves um uh, and uh some of the more familiar ones are the narrow leaf pondweeds um but there are a number of other rather um different um it's, it's sort of taxonomically that, that sort of come together in this group. So it is. It will seem a, perhaps an odd mixture of species, but the the th theme that they have in common uh, is that they're all uh, with with simple uh, undivided uh, uh, leaves. Um, and it, in this group, there are uh, a about a dozen uh, genera or, or sort of groups of, of species. Um, and uh, the ones that I've highlighted in orange here, uh, I, I won't be covering in detail because they're already covered by, uh, by previous webinars. Uh, but the main aim of this is just to pull things together a bit uh, and just to uh, see how those fit in with, with other, uh, other uh, 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 species that have a sort of similar uh, uh, form of, uh, of leaves. Um, what I won't be covering in this one, uh, which you might think uh, maybe should be included here, are the uh, elodeas and, and those sort of related species, uh, which some of them do have quite sort of linear, but they're short uh, and they're translucent. Uh, and uh, they fit better into the into the group of, of, of species uh, with, that have translucent underwater leaves. Um, so I won't be covering those in here. Uh, in terms of books, uh, the um, color guides uh, are, are a bit difficult to use for these because that we're co covering some vastly different taxonomic groups. Uh, and so, uh, 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 so in terms of families, there'll be species that are um, many pages apart. They, they won't all be together in one place in the book. So they don't tend to be terribly easy to use when, when looking at, 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 these, at these groups. Um, the, uh, one of the sort of longer standing one, if sort of starting on aquatic plants is, is the British water plants. 
it, it's uh, it, written about 50 years ago, but it's and it's gone through several editions since. But it's quite a sort of simple. Uh, uh, it's an illustrated key more, more than anything else, but there's some good pictures in there too. Um, uh, that's quite a good place to start with aquatic plants. Um, now, I, I put a cross across this one because normally I would recommend this as a, uh, as a really useful book. Uh, but for, there is a key, I think it's the last key in the book for uh, um, uh, this particular group, the group of uh, species with linear leaves. Uh, and unfortunately, there are a few errors in there. So I would say, please don't use that key. It'll just confuse you. Um, but uh, a, a good book to use uh, is uh, Richard Lansdowne's uh, uh, Guide to River Plants. Uh, I think it will cover pretty much all those, although that book covers mainly rivers, uh, uh, I think it will cover pretty much all the species that we're talking about today. And uh, uh, it's uh, a similar arrangement to, to the uh, uh, it's got some uh, some useful keys for uh, sort of narrowing down what what it might be, and there's quite a lot of detail on some particular certain families. Uh, get, gives extra detail and, and tables of, of of the characters to look at. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, I've over the years developed a number of keys. Um, they're sort of designed to be to fit onto A4 so that you can laminate them and take take them out in the field. And uh, uh, because one of the problems about looking at aquatic plants is that there's generally a lot of water around and you drop books into the water, which doesn't do them any good. Um, uh, and uh, there's also this sort of brings uh, it's hopefully quite succinctly into uh, just you can narrow down quite quickly to uh, at least what family it is. Um, these are available on the uh, BSBI's website, uh, on the Aquatic Plants Project website. Uh, uh, all of them, you can download them from there. Uh, and I think Polly will send a, a link through, through the chat to, to that. Right, to, to move on to this group, uh, there are probably three key characters that are gonna come up, um, uh, uh, which is the arrangement of the, the first one is the uh, arrangement of the leaves, um, sort of whether they're in whirls or uh, staggered on the stem, uh, whether they're opaque or translucent, uh, or and whether their uh, cross-section is uh, flat or whether they're more solid and uh, uh, some of them are made up of tubes of, of various combinations. Um, I will work through these based on the first of these characters, the leaf arrangement. So uh, I, I will sort of just to, as, a, as a sort of way of, of working through these, uh, I, I think that's probably the easiest thing. Um, uh, so we'll look at the tufted ones first and then when, ones with, the, with a regular world and then move on to the the ones where the, the leaves are single. <clears throat> um, so uh, if, if we start with the ones that are uh, tufted, essentially there, there is only one that has a lot of sort of big clumps of leaves, often sort of more than 20 leaves in a, in a, in a clump. Um, looks a bit like hair uh, in, in the water. They've got very slender uh, leaves to them, um, and uh, uh, this is. Uh, uh, but they, they uh, particularly at the base, they will have quite a lot of uh, sort of clusters. Sometimes, particularly uh, if you're getting into shallower water, you will start having more rush-like things because it is actually, although it, it looks very unrush-like, this is actually an aquatic form of the bulbous rush. So it goes completely different when it goes underwater. Um, uh, it comes, it ends up looking looking more like hair, 
Um, but sometimes in very shallow water, you might get sort of transitional forms that, that do have alternate leaves um, that are, are looking much more rush-like. Um, but it will still, and, until it uh, properly dries out, you will still often have the, these very dense clumps. Um, and it's the only one that does that. Um, uh, and uh, it, it is quite a common uh, thing that you'll come across in, in soft waters and more acidic sites. Um, uh, so the next ones I was going to deal with are ones that have regular whirls of leaves uh, of sort of five, usually some, somewhere around eight or ten is the typical number, but the cutoff I'm given here is, is five. Uh, and there are two things to think about here. Uh, one is mare's tail. Now, mare's tail, you're probably much more familiar with uh, as a, a plant sticking up out of the water, and you, think, you might be thinking, why on earth are we covering it uh, uh, as, a, as a true aquatic plant rather than an immersion plant? The thing is that before it gets to the surface, it produces a rather floppy, long leaf form, uh, which is fully aquatic. Um, uh, and uh, I don't actually, unfortunately, have a, a, a picture of a, of a whole plant, but, uh, but uh, this just sort of shows what, what they look like. The leaves get longer, they're more translucent, um, and the whole stem is, is, is just sort of, is quite a floppy form. Um, and you can get some quite dense beds of that, uh, uh, particularly in sort of rather uh, in the deeper water that, that's probably too deep for it to produce um, the, the sort of more familiar immersion form. Um, but uh, it's quite easy to tell uh, simply that there aren't really any other things that have these flat leaves in, in whirls uh, of this sort of number. Um, um, so that's the, that's the usual giveaway, and, and, and there's not much else that, that you could confuse it with. Um, so uh, the other one uh, that you'll come across uh, uh, that you might uh, that, uh, sometimes will fit into this group are some of the stoneworts. Now, the stoneworts often have uh, other sort of uh, thing sort of cells on the branch on the branches which what really effectively look like leaves um, uh, and you're more likely perhaps to put them into the feathery groups rather than in this sort of undivided leaf uh, groups but uh, these cells that are on on the on the branchlets um, they only form when the when the plants are fertile so sometimes you can have basically just sort of simple looking uh, uh, branches, uh, uh, leaves, or, or, or what appear to be leaves uh, coming out in whirls. Um, so it, that's why I've included it in here. Uh, uh, often people will recognize stoneworts just by the general chisel, but uh, uh, <coughs> this is uh, just to sort of bring it in here. Uh, it, it's uh, um, the, the number of branch that leaves sort of uh, uh, in the world is usually around eight, uh, fairly consistently that sort of number. Um, uh, so, uh, but it differs from Hippurus, uh, the mare's tail, uh, by having cylindrical uh, um, uh, leaves, branchlets. Branchlets is the, is the uh, Stoneworts unfortunately have their own technical jargon, so the, the technical word is, is branches, but in general appearance they, they look like sort of leaves. Um, uh, so these are cylindricals where, where, whereas the mare's tail have, have flattened leaves. Um, I'm not going into detail about stoneworts because I've done another presentation specifically about stoneworts. So, uh, if you identified it to a stonework, then I would recommend that you move on to that that particular presentation about how to how to separate the stoneworks. Um, so if we sort of reduce down in numbers, so there are uh, a, a couple of species that come into this group, uh, or a couple, uh, 
it's more than a species, but a, a family uh, that, that come into this group that have regular equal and opposite pairs of leaves. Um, uh, and they're the water starworts um, uh, and the rather uh, painful introduction, aggressive in introduction uh, called swamp stone crop, which is uh, Crassia helmsii. Severe pest uh, in all sorts of places throughout the, uh, both Britain and Ireland, uh, and uh, cause of quite a lot of efforts to control it. Um, sadly, it's now getting into the canal systems in, in, around Dublin, and that uh, is unfortunately affecting a, a really rich habitat. Um, because it can uh, take over quite quite badly. Um, so th these are really the only two in this group that have these uh, equal and opposite paired leaves, easily separated. The leaves of Klitschke have little notches in the tip, uh, whereas the Crassula um, ha has pointed tips to the leaves. Crassula always also tends to be a, a, a little bit fleshy in, in, in texture, um, uh, whereas the, the Kalitschkis are often rather, rather floppy. Um, but uh, so they're quite easy to, to separate apart. Um, uh, uh, and they're, as I say, the only two with, with equal and opposite pairs of leaves. Um, there are a number of species that uh, have more irregular, but they're still grouped leaves. Um, but uh, the, uh, they tend to be sort of ones or twos or threes and, or up to four in number, uh, but, but they tend to be unequal in length and, uh, and uh, irregular. Some nodes have, have, have say two and others four or so. Uh, uh, so it's not consistent uh, throughout the plant. Um, uh, and there are several of these, um, and uh, uh, I will work through them uh, one, uh, one by one. Um, the, the first one to uh, talk about is uh, Zanichelia palustris, the, the horned pondweed. Um, it uh, looks rather similar to uh, um, uh, some of the, the narrow leaf pondweeds, um, uh, but it differs from them by having, as I say, leaves that are in, in clusters. Um, but the most striking thing uh, that, that and, and often the, the way they're uh, spotted most often is these uh, very distinctive fruits, which look a bit like uh, bunches of bananas. Uh, and they're situated on the nodes, they're, they're sort of crescent shaped. Um, and uh, uh, they're very distinctive. They're often a bit paler, so they show up against the, the, uh, the, the foliage. Um, and and uh, um, if you see them, there's no, there's no mistaking them. Uh, I haven't ventured. There, there are possibly uh, two species of Xanachelia. Traditionally, we've only dealt with one in Britain, but probably there, should, there are there are more. But I'm not familiar enough with uh, with them to know uh, exactly how you separate them. Um, um, and I think probably uh, the, the best that there will be uh, uh, coming up this year. There is going to be a special European uh, aquatic plant flora which is going to answer a lot of the questions that were less clear about it in, in, uh, in, in Ireland and, and Britain. Um, uh, and that may well clarify what the characters, what the best characters for separating them are. Um, yes, the, uh, another thing to, uh, that will come up is, uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, there are some species that are made up of two tubes and there are some species that have flat leaves. Uh, uh, and this is one of the ones that has two tubes. Um, next one in this group, 
uh, is uh, a, uh, it's a spike rush. It's the needle spike rush, um, which uh, is very, very much smaller than the, the, the spike rush that we're familiar with, uh, the, which is the, the marsh um, uh, uh, spike rush, Eleocris palustris. This is a, a very slender thing that looks a bit like grass when it's growing in a, in a mass. Um, and uh, when you actually sort of uh, look at it more closely, uh, it it tends it grows as little tufts uh, growing uh, along. Uh, a, a, I suppose it's a, a set of stone that may be a rhizome. I'm not quite sure exactly. <coughs> Uh, which, which it is. Um, one of the very distinctive things about it is, is that the bottoms of the stem are always white, uh, and the, and the roots themselves are quite white, and that that shows up quite strikingly if you have some some washed up. Uh, the one the, uh, a, a good character if you're uncertain is to actually break open. Uh, a, a stem and just look at the cross section. Now it is quite a fine thing, so you probably need quite a good lens to actually see. But the um, uh, the um, Eleocris sicularis is made up of three or four tubes, uh, whereas most of the other ones we're talking about in the in the section, uh, if they are made up of tubes, it's only two tubes. Um, uh, so it, it's uh, quite a nice species to find. It's not uh, all that common, but in some areas it, it's it's quite frequent, um, uh, and it's usually in quite nice mesotrophic lakes, um, uh, or it, it can be in canals, um, uh, it, uh, and it, uh, even in ditches. But the more classically, uh, I, I think of it as a, as a as a lake species, and it will grow up to about a meter's depth underwater, but it will only fruit when it's exposed above the water. And it produces a very typical Eleochrus uh, type uh, flower head, but just very much in miniature, um, just very scaled down version of, of, of the spike rushes that we're more familiar with. Uh, there is another uh, spike rush, which is quite similar to uh, the the needle spike rush. Uh, it's not one that I know particularly. Um, it, it's uh, smaller. Uh, the most, the main thing is that it's restricted to mud flats or, or, at, at the mouths of estuaries. Sort of, well, uh, sort of uh, the the fresh water um, uh, bits of, of tidal tidal rivers. Um, where, where it starts being uh, uh, fluctuating uh, with the tide. Um, uh, in Ireland, uh, actually, in, in, in I think both Britain and Ireland, it's a, a protected species um, because it, it is an extremely rare thing. Um, uh, it, I think there are on, only three sites in Ireland, um, one of which is definitely gone. Uh, and the other one, I think, hasn't been seen for at least 50 years in, in the Republic. Uh, that's in, in Kerry, in North Kerry. Um, and I think there's another site in Northern Ireland where it has seen a bit more recently, but uh, it may well be extinct in Ireland. Um, but it's, all, it's also pretty rare uh, uh, in Britain. It's not something I really know, uh, uh, and but I think probably my best advice, it, uh, as with all Eleocris, there is a very good website uh, 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 produced by Jeremy Roberts uh, that, that goes into a lot of detail for, for all the Eleocrises, and that would be is much the best place to, to, uh, to look for the characters that separate these, these two. Uh, again, there's a link there, which I, I, I think that, that Polly will, will put into the chat. Um, next one in this group uh, tends quite often to have single, but there are often groups of uh, sort of two or three uh, uh, leaves coming up. Uh, again, a, a creeping rhizome. Uh, this is pillwort, uh, th uh, which is a uh, fern. Um, 
not of course looking very much like a fern but it, it's an, a little aquatic fern um, and when it fruits it produces these little uh, sporocarps uh, which are these are the these are the pills they're round little balls just uh, dotted along the rhizome um, the uh, apart from the general sort of form of it with this um, uh, <coughs> uh, stem um, uh, with the leaves sort of coming up out of it. Uh, the most useful diagnostic character is the shape of these young uh, young shoots, uh, which are, uh, they're always, when they first emerge, they're always curled up, uh, a bit like piggy tails, um, uh, or the, I mean, my way of looking at Looking at them uh, is effectively their their croziers, but uh, uh, like like the crozier of a fern, and, and that's how they sort of uh, unravel when they when they grow. <coughs> um, but that that's the that's the key thing to look out for with pillwort, um, uh, and uh, when you're looking for it, uh, another sort of useful thing to look at. Uh, especially if there are other sort of fine leaf things that, that are a bit similar, it, is that the, the, the shoots, uh, uh, the leaves tend to be a little bit sort of flexuous. So they sort of uh, wriggle around a bit uh, rather than being straight. And, and sometimes that can attract uh, your eye towards them because sometimes it can be quite difficult if, if say, the, this, the, this lower stem is, is down in, in the mud and sort of a little bit difficult to see. Sometimes the, the rather flexuous stem leaves sort of sticking up out of the out of the murk of the at the bottom of the, of the, the pond or, or whatever uh, is, is the thing to attract to your, your eye. Um, okay. Um, the other one in this group uh, could possibly be included in uh, with the yellow deers in, in the uh, uh, translucent leaf things, but often the leaves are quite narrow, uh, and, and that is the slender naiad. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, quite a well-studded plant because it's regarded as extremely threatened uh, Europe-wide, um, but and uh, in. Ireland particularly, but also uh, in, in, in Scotland, there are still some re really good populations of it. <coughs> um, it has translucent leaves like, like uh, the elodeas and, and uh, uh, the, the translucent water starworts, um, but the leaves, rather, in the water starworts, the leaves would be in pairs. Uh, in elodea, they would be in threes. Uh, here in, in the slender naiad, um, they're rather irregular. There are uh, sort of twos, threes, fours uh, in, in each group of leaves. Um, and it has these rather distinctive fruits. Which, uh, it has the, this, this sort of upswept look is very typical of it. Uh, and what, what often you look out for, it looks just that looks a bit different from, from things like Elodie's. Um, uh, but yes, yeah, it's got these little conical fruits uh, in the intersections of the leaves. Uh, the leaves are toothed as well, uh, which uh, uh, it can be a useful character because uh, most of the other things that we're talking about uh, today don't have anything of the, in the way of, uh, of tooth leaves. They're just uh, smooth edged. Uh, okay, I think that's the the last of the uh, the ones with the group leaves. Uh, so that we're just left with, uh, I think there are sort of four things to talk about uh, of the, the the species that have uh, single leaves, i.e., sort of staggered alternately up up the stem. Um, the first one that we got here is the floating spike rush, um, uh, which. Uh, uh, is always a very light green uh, and the leaves are flat uh, and solid um, uh, and uh, the leaves start off being sheathing and, uh, and it actually sometimes it be, can be quite dense and it's quite difficult to see 
whether they are truly sort of alternate leaves or whether they're in, they're in clusters. But but as soon as they sort of stretch out a bit, it's, it's quite clear that they're alternate leaves. Um, one of the most useful diagnostic things, which I've tried to pick out here, uh, is uh, the, the leaves start off uh, sheathing the stem. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, but what happens is that the, the inner side of the sheath very soon disappears. Uh, and what you're left with is just the, the backbone of the, of the sheath and then the blade. Uh, and you can see here uh, where this has happened, uh, the, uh, the, you've got the sort of backbone of the sheath there, and then there's an obvious bend, and then it goes off with, with the blade. And, and, and sometimes you can find quite a few of these, uh, but that sort of kink with a, with a bend uh, in, in the leaf uh, is, is actually quite a useful diagnostic thing to, to uh, point you in the direction of, Edigetum fluotans. Um, and uh, it basically it's just the, the, the sheath that's, that's half disappeared. Um, it's specifically a soft water species. Um, and it, uh, so it, you're often seeing it growing with things like Juncus bulbosus. Uh, but Juncus bulbosus tends to be much finer. This tends to be a sort of little, just that little bit wider, maybe a sort of millimeter or or, or so wide, um, and it has a sort of flat, solid leaf, whereas Genesis bulbosus has a very fine and are made up of two tubes. Um, uh, it's quite, you quite often see it flowering, particularly if it's sort of beginning to uh, get out of the water, uh, and uh, uh, I haven't got a flower in this picture, but it looks like a pale, version of, it, of an Eleocris, uh, of, a, of a spike rush. So it's just a sort of simple head, a simple cluster of, uh, of florets in, in a, uh, a sort of bud-like thing at the tip. But they do tend to be pale green rather than dark green as they usually are in Eleocris. Um, now, pondweeds. Um, uh, again, pondweeds we, I've dealt with uh, uh, in a, a separate uh, uh, um, webinar, so I'm not going to go into the details of the different pondweeds on, on this occasion, but uh, I just need to say that, that most of the, the skinny pondweeds will, will come out in this group. Um, and uh, they differ, for example, from, from the spike rush, uh, uh, the floating spike rush, uh, uh, by ha because the leaf uh, uh, and the stipule, which is uh, uh, this bit here, uh, they they both come straight to the node. There isn't any sheathing part, um, uh, so that uh, so the blade comes straight into the node. Um, the, uh, there is sort of a general uh, thing that if you have a, a plant with uh, uh, alternate leaves and stipules, um, then uh, and it's an aquatic plant. Then you know immediately that it's a pondweed. Uh, whatever, because pondweeds, uh, pondweedians come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Uh, ones with big floating leaves, ones with big underwater leaves, and various versions of, of, of springy ones. Um, but they all have that uh, constant character of alternate leaves uh, and these stipules. But these are just, uh, they enclose the stem. It's a little sort of sheath of, that encloses the stem. Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, distinctive of the group. Um, the the uh, Another one in this group uh, previously was Potomagetan. Um, but has now been separated off into Stachenia. Um, uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, like the Potomagetans, that they have uh, uh, sort of alternate leaves. Uh, but in this one, the, uh, the this particular group, as I say, used to be part of Potomagetan, but it's now been shelved off as a. Geneticists, I think, have, have decided that it's sufficiently different. 
Um, but it, instead of the, the blade coming straight into the node, so the node is somewhere down here, uh, or, or in this, it's, it's down, down here, uh, and there is, uh, and the leaf blade is here, but there's this bit in between where, where the leaf uh, sheathes the stem. Uh, now, in sort of, I believe that in physical origin, it, it's basically the leaf being fused to the stipule uh, to, to make a sheath. Uh, and the stipule you can see uh, carrying on up above the, uh, where, where the blade goes off, um, looking rather like a legume would, would on a grass. So it, it structurally looks quite similar to a grass. Um, but uh, it has, uh, the leaves are sort of slender and they're made up of two tubes. Uh, so uh, uh, they differ in that way from, from the other pondweeds as well, because the other pondweeds have flat leaves. Uh, uh, the, the two Stachenia species uh, are, um, uh, are made up of two tubes. And um, uh, again, I covered Stachenia when I was talking about the narrowly pondweeds. Um, so I won't go into the sort of details of, of the separation of the two, just sort of uh, pointing out uh, sort of the, the key characters of, of the actual genus. Um, and I think this might be the final one uh, uh, in this group, uh, it, uh, which is the tassel pombies, the rupia species, uh, also covered uh, when I was talking about the narrowly pond weeds. Uh, uh, this, very like the stachenias, the, the two stachenia variants of Potomac um has a, a sheathing uh, base. So you've got a sheathing part and then a blade going off, uh, very like a, a stachenia. Um, and you will get them growing together in because the, the two rupia species are specifically brackish water. Um, uh, and pectinators will grow in in quite uh, quite strongly brackish water too, so you will get them growing together. And the best way of separating them is that, whereas in the stachenias there was a uh, a legule like extension of the stipule, in rupias you don't get that. Uh, you might just get a few flaps just at the, uh, at the top, some little oracles, um, but as, uh, there's no uh, continuation uh, uh, like a ligule uh, in rupia uh, compared to uh, which you had in the stachenia. Uh, the other thing, I mean, if they're flowering, the flowers look very different from potamogetans and things. Um, uh, but uh, the other useful vegetative character is that the tips of the leaves of rupia have these little teeth uh, around the edges. You don't get teeth on any of the narrow leaf pondweeds. Uh, or, or the stachenias. Uh, so that's another useful character for, for, for separating them. Um, so I think that is sort of a bit of a rush through, but I think that covers uh, all, all of the uh, uh, these particular uh, narrow leaf ones. It's a bit of a mixture of, of species. Uh, a lot of them are around the pondweed sort of area um, uh, and uh, they're quite easily confused with some of the narrow leaf pondweeds, um, uh, but hopefully that helps just to clarify them a bit. But uh, uh, certainly it, it will help, I hope, to cut down the possibilities if you're trying to work out what, 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 what that bit of string was. Um, uh, so uh, I, I, th I think that's, that's where I will finish on this.